and welcome to Gen Friends. I'm your host, Sherry Hudson Passy from Carolina Girl Genealogy. And as always, I am so grateful to have a wonderful panel. We've got Laura Hedgecock from Treasure Chest of Memories. Hey, Laura. Hi. Good to have you here. Good to be here. <laughs> we have Melissa Barker, our archive lady, sitting in her archive. <laughs> Hello, everybody. We have Mary Kutcher Roddy sitting in front of her wonderful quilt from <laughs> MKR. I almost, Hi, yeah. everybody. <laughs> yeah, M MKR Genealogy. Just beautiful quilts. You've always got something really cool behind you. And last Thanks. but not least, we've got Dan Earl, our family history guy. Hi, Dan. Hello. It's good to have you here. With nothing interesting behind me. With nothing interesting. You've nothing got a Nothing interesting. Shelf. We've got yeah. archives. We've got... <laughs> quilts I've got, now I've you got have books. a pineapple and a ukulele yeah, yeah you have a, have, have a pineapple yeah. <laughs> that's good. and that color green is really a nice color green yes we yes, yes. Well, it's a nice we, green we call it sail green is what, what, it's what color sail green it was sail? on sale <laughs> i love it the best way to decorate right that's right best way to decorate well, we are fresh off the VGA conference that um, was held this weekend, and we decided we would like to talk about virtual conferences and virtual education and the pros and cons, and we couldn't really think of a lot of cons, but <laughs> we thought that we would talk about this, um, you know, we've got this pandemic going on and so many things are going virtual, and this conference was such a big hit. It had... If you weren't able to go, oh, you missed something really wonderful. But we thought we would talk about what we enjoyed from it, maybe encourage people from this point on. If you have not done any classes virtually, um, conferences or institute classes or whatever it may be, that you'll be encouraged to, um, to sign up and go. So first of all, Dan Earl did a fabulous job as he is now the president of VGA. It was fabulous it was fabulous yeah great classes it was three days and i think that other than um the presentations which were all fabulous i think my favorite part was the breakout rooms would you tell us about what we did with the breakout rooms yeah so that was really uh the this kind of the brainchild of linda db who was if you were there you you got to hear from her a lot she was the person keeping track of the questions for me and um really kind of helping behind the scenes and um, she had this idea several months back and had, had reached out to Catherine and i and said hey is this a thing is, is this something that we could do and um we were debating whether to have the 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 conference on GoToWebinar because we, we VGA does have a GoToWebinar account, um, or if we wanted to switch it over to Zoom. Um, and we thought, boy, if we just switched it over to Zoom, then then there's one link. You don't have to change anything for mm -hmm. breakout sessions. You don't have to leave GoToWebinar running in the background and then hop onto this link. And it just made it so much of a smoother process. And there's just a number of benefits to doing that. So once we made the decision to do that, we just had Linda said hey you know we just said hey you 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 handle all this you do all this stuff and she mm -hmm. just ran with it and it was it was fantastic and all the feedback that we've gotten people have always said that was the highlight was oh being absolutely small, small yeah. groups of you know five to ten people and then the after parties <laughs> um, you know there ain't no, ain't no party like a vga party <laughs> <laughs> and uh, sometimes went until almost four o'clock in the morning oh, gosh. the next day. Oh gosh! Um, and uh, and so uh, so obviously very popular. Very uh, popular. And it's, and it's super simple to do with Zoom as long as you're in yeah. a Zoom meeting. I mean, we could do that right now if you had it set up. You could just click a button and then yeah. we'd all go into our own separate rooms. <laughs> <laughs> separate rooms. <laughs> go to your room. <laughs> go to your room. Yes, exactly. And and you didn't have to. And and you know mm -hmm. I I. Some people were commenting and saying, you know, I'm, I'm kind of a shy person and I was worried about, you know, going into, should I, should I let you break, you know, because you push, you can click and say, yes, I, I will move into this room. Or you could have just stayed and waited for the next speaker, you know. And a lot of people said, I tried it and I really liked it because you, it's kind of a random thing. You're just assigned to a, a group of people and, you know, and you just get to talk and say, hey, where are you from? And you know, what are you researching? Just like you would do at a in-person conference. Mm -hmm. 
you just talk to the people around you. Yes, Mary. Well, one of my hardest decisions to make was, you know, I wanted to go in the breakout room. I wanted, I'm social. I wanted to socialize with these people. <laughs> okay. So when do I make my potty break yeah, um, exactly. and, <laughs> and, and get no. my lunch? Right. No. So, so sometimes seriously, I, I went to the breakout room and then I thought I can listen to the session on the recording. So I'm going to go get my lunch now. <laughs> <laughs> Because I couldn't get the breakout room on exactly. the recording, so I yep. kind of had to take advantage of that when I yeah. could. Yeah, there were some people yeah. that turned off their video so that they could eat, but they would still be in the but breakout still, room. Yeah. <laughs> I did that too. <laughs> I was, I like the fact that in the breakout rooms, it wasn't hard for it, any conversations to get started. I think basic mm -hmm. couple ones of you, yes. where are you from, where, what are you researching, that kind of thing. It was easy to break the ice. Sure. And I don't, it was random, but there was one lady from Delaware. I was in a breakout with her, room with her four times. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like, you again. That's great. So, well, that's... in a couple of the breakout rooms that I was in, um, Jeff, or uh, not Jeff, Jane uh, Neff Rollins mm -hmm, was in mm -hmm. there, and her, she had this brilliant idea. She said, okay, everyone give Melissa your email address, and then she's going to email all of our email addresses to everybody so that we can okay, stay in contact. So we, oh. and two of the breakout rooms, because she was in them, she said that, because she said we should be, you know, getting together, and we should, you know, be, um, mm -hmm. so I did. <laughs> oh, that's cool. That's really yeah, cool. Great idea. That's a really good yeah, idea. I was in one where the kind of, I don't know how to say, somebody kind of hijacked the conversation into like <laughs> one specific, like two people were researching one little area. Yeah. And okay, so that's when I got my coffee. I mean, it was no exactly. biggie. Exactly. That's you know when you I mean? say, okay, guys, I need to uh, yeah. run. It was good to talk to you. And a couple of times I had some things I had to do in between you know, sessions. I had a dog that needed to go out, you know, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And so I would at least go into the room at the beginning to see who was there so I could say hello. Cause I, you never know who's going to be in there. And so I, I could meet new people and then just, you know, apologize and say, I can't stay the whole time, but it's nice to get to know you. And, and, and it was easy, like you said, to start talking as well, because we had just had a session. Mm -hmm. Right. And so, you know, when you sit there and you talk to people about the session that you just heard and what you learned and you, you, you talk to people as you're in person, as you're coming out of the class, you're talking to people as you're walking to your next class, you're talking to people. So that helped get that feeling of, um, yeah, you know, I kind of agree with you. I kind of feel like the conference was kind of superior to just a single virtual education hour that you might pick up here there or yonder mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and I don't know if it was because you went with a mindset of giving a bigger chunk of your time or I don't know exactly what it was I found it um closer to a person and I know it's the virtual genealogy society it would never have been a person. <laughs> exactly so we can't even say that's a con because it's it was always going to be virtual right but um I don't know something about the chunk of time and mm -hmm. and I don't know I think too having kind of setting it off like Dan did and people chatting and getting comfortable and you go I went on not much ahead of time on the first day and I was just like oh I see oh I see exactly because we all miss each other so excited we have a video together I don't know if Mary experienced this or not but um after I gave my presentation on Saturday Every time we'd go to a breakout room, people would ask me questions as because yes. I was a speaker. Yes. And so, and they had, because they got to know me a little, ones who didn't know me that well or didn't know me at all. Right. And there were several that knew me and they would say, oh, she says, I follow, you know, it's like the, the trolling fans. It's like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the, um, but it was great for me yes. because, you know, they got to ask the questions that maybe they didn't get to ask after my presentation or they came up with other questions right. you know, during the day yeah so that was really really great I enjoyed that and you probably got to answer more questions this way than you would have I at did. a face-to-face -face conference because you know you you give your presentation 
and people come up to talk to you and you've only got so much time because the next mm-hmm. person is coming to set up into the room. And yeah. so that was, I think that was a big plus for presenters too, is each, yeah. if they chose to stay on yeah. and, and go to the breakout rooms that they were, they were able to talk to people mm-hmm. who, you know, who had listened to them and had questions. And Mary had Mary, a really fun thing did. happen to her. Yeah. I, um, the thing I really love about being a genealogy presenter is I get to um, ask questions because I, obviously I don't know everything. And, and so I have questions about how to do stuff. And I had, you know, I've had a couple of experiences where I'll just throw it out there in one of my talks. Um, I wish I knew more about this. If anybody does, please reach out to me. So in this instance, um, I was showing an example and I didn't know how to OCR my own PDF um, alphabet soup here. Um, <laughs> but I put it out and, and somebody put something in the chat. Yeah. And so I played around with the website that he suggested. And I have a newspaper clipping that was a scrapbook for that, or a, a scrap of paper that my dad's cousin sent him. And I have gotten new information about one of my distant cousins that I didn't know. I love um, that so yeah, much. So. I love that. So I much. blogged about it. And even, yeah, yeah. We'll so put the I link. We'll put the link out there. Yeah, yeah. but <laughs> that is wonderful. Laura, you said you had a comment. Yeah, I, one of the things too I noticed was I think it made it. I don't know. Sometimes when you go to a conference, there's the speakers mm-hmm. and the other people. Like I've been at Roots Tech before, and people see the speaker ribbon and they're like, "Oh, oh, let her through. She's got a speaker." <laughs> <laughs> But I thought it was really cool that the speakers would, I don't know if they all did, but I know like Angie Bush came late into one of the breakout rooms we were in and oh. she's just chatting with us. Yeah. You know, yeah. speakers was, are people too. Exactly. Yeah. I think it made it a little less I know that, but so I think it, it kind of put the whole conference thing on a more even keel. Like, it was yeah. Just, yeah, it was great. But yeah. um, I and the other thing of- I really noticed was the um, expertise level of people that were attending. Mm-hmm. Oh, what was yeah. the results well, of that one yeah, poll? They Dan, yeah, they did a poll. Yeah, so we, we did a poll, and the vast majority of the attendees had more than 20 years of research experience. So if you add up the total number of attendees, it's, we're pushing into the thousands of years of experience, wow. um, of research experience. And so not only did you have top-notch speakers, but you also had very knowledgeable and, and uh, people mm-hmm. that, that, that aren't going to get thrown by, you know, not finding something in, a, in an ancestry search right away. You know, that these are right. people that know how to research that have been yeah. doing it for a long time. And so, uh, but the, the one demographic that was lacking was, was beginners. Um, and so f- for us at VGA, that's, that's going to be a big push for next year is making sure that we're, we're doing things to reach out to beginners and making sure that everybody can feel comfortable coming regardless of their expertise level. Um, and, and then benefit from not only the, the speakers, but also from being and associating with in these breakout yes. rooms, yes. more experienced genealogists, because that's how you get better. You don't get better just by sitting there and, and reading the, the cue by yourself. I mean, that'll help, but you get better <laughs> by talking with other genealogists and, and getting out there exactly. and, and interacting and asking questions and, and things. And so we're going to try to next next year in 2021 tackle that because the nice thing is is we know it's going to be a virtual conference we don't exactly. have to be like, we don't have to be like well what if it's in person <laughs> we, we know it's going to be virtual we you know we don't have to make any kind of plans we don't have to <laughs> you know have a contingency of well if there's you know if if you know one of these vaccines works or we get everything under control <laughs> and it's safe again we're doing it virtually, whether it's safe or not. So exactly, because you are the virtual. That's right. <laughs> well, do you think the fact that we haven't been able to get together as genealogists, you know, I heard one lady say, you know, I go to Roots Tech so I can be among my own kind, like that our <laughs> friends and family don't get it. Yeah. Do you think it made it more successful that we kind of craved each other's company? Mm, I think so. Yeah. And I think you're right because you you'd said before that's, you know, that sort of camaraderie the the talking in the hallway um after a class was what what we're really missing. You can you can go to any you know, society or any of the other 
uh, you know, educational opportunities. And, and you don't really get that to the same yeah. extent that we had that at VGA where you just, you know, if you wanted to do that, just like when you're at a conference, if you would just want to beeline it for the, you know, for the cafeteria, grab your $5 hot dog and bag <laughs> of chips and sit by yourself at a table. Yeah. Great. You can, you could do that. You didn't have to interact with anybody, but if you wanted to interact yeah. and I, and most people did, um, the, the only, the only downside to that is we had, we'd have some speakers that would come in. And so I would get text messages from the speakers like, uh, where is everybody? Did I get the wrong day? Because it was <laughs> ghost town in the main room, but yeah. anybody that was there was just their name on the screen. And it was just silence. <laughs> and I'd be like, Oh no. And so sometimes I'd have to jump out of a, out of a, a room and, and leave a conversation to go admit the speaker, um, for the next session, um, into the, into the room. And so, uh, so you do get that sort of ghost town mm-hmm. that happens, which happens at a conference too. Exactly. I mean, we've all seen that at Roots Tech when there's sessions going on, the expo hall comes a little bit quieter and it's mm-hmm. much easier to to do other things in the expo hall than it is, you know, when it's not class time. So. Yeah. Right, right. I now we had that the, oh, uh, go, ahead, go ahead. I found that the, the breakout rooms and the, and the, the conversations and the thing and the meeting up with people, it was, to me, it seemed better than at a conference. And the reason I say better is because at a conference, there's a sensory overload (laughs) and there is so much going on, pulling your attention. And so in these breakout rooms, it was like, okay, I have these five people on my screen and I can talk to them, you know? And so it was, to me, I liked that better because I didn't have, you know, everything pulling at you from all directions. You didn't have somebody with the smell of roasted almonds sort of wafting yes. through the halls. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I like that smell. I love that smell, but that was, that's, and sadly, we won't be able to recreate that unless we buy the Yankee candle and mail it to everybody. <laughs> we, 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 hey, we recreated the, the clapping. Yankee candle makes a roasted almond fl- <laughs> scent. Oh. That's too funny. Hint, hint. Dan, even, Dan even had recreated the uh, applause. That's right. Oh, yeah. Yep. You got it? I didn't hear it. We didn't Didn't hear hear it. it. It's not doing it. It's not doing it. I wonder why. Oh, there There it is. is. (laughs) So I was taking a walk with my husband. I was saying it's hard to come up with cons. Yeah. And And one of the only ones that I came up with is, and it's a Zoom feature, like, when we had the chat, we could chat where everybody could read it. You could talk individually to the the three co-hosts, but not to each other. But I don't know how else you would do that unless you had a Slack channel set up for the thing. We did. We did. When you hit, when you hit over where it says like in the chat, where it says, I'm going to do it on this. I'm looking on here. You click the, yeah, you just pick the person's name. If you go to where it says everyone, but they had it set up everybody. Yeah. And the breakout rooms, we could do that. Oh, okay, yeah. Yeah. But, um, I don't know man, about. I never. Like, I didn't try it whenever it was when everybody came back together. But in the breakout rooms, we did that because we would put our email addresses to each other and stuff. That's so oh, okay. Lively. I didn't even try in the breakout room, but that would have been cool just to be able to like you know somebody that's reaching you know doing that or just to say good morning or whatever. Mm-hmm. But, and then Sherry, you brought up the only other thing is that some people don't have high speed internet. That's right. And it's hard and it's hard for them, you know, and, and some people are still a little nervous of, you know, anything like this, that they go to webinar or that, and I think most people really actually, they've gotten used to go to webinar, but there's something about Zoom that I think for some reason people are still hesitant about. You'd think by this time in the COVID, <laughs> in our COVID world people would have gotten used to it, but you're right. There are some people that just don't have high speed internet. And so for them, they try to log in and they're like in and out, in and out. And they're everybody speaking like that, you know, and they can't understand, but um, you know, there's a phone number you can call in, you can call in and listen that way. So if you don't have high speed internet, look at those uh, registrations that come to you in your email and look at that phone number. So if you get kicked out or you can't get in or whatever, call the phone number and you can still listen to what's going on. Um, I don't know how that, I don't think that would work for a breakout room, but, uh, or maybe can it, can you get thrown into a breakout room if, if it's just a, cause yeah, it'll think- show up, it'll show up, your little square will show up that you're on the phone. Maybe. So, I, I think you can. Um... I'm not, I'm not a hundred percent on that, but I, yeah. I would think 
that you might be able to. Yeah, maybe you would but, think you could test but yeah, it but out. We did, have, right. we did have some people call in. Um, yeah. We had, we had phone numbers, and I know um, our past president, Catherine Wilson, who lives in <laughs> sort of the, the black hole of cell service. Exactly. Um, was still able to, to call in, yeah. To call in and, and use, use the cell phone signal. Right. Uh, to be yeah. able to, uh, to, to participate and at least listen into the conference. And, right. Um, you know, and, and, you know, and, and when we, when we're working with a global, uh, you know, group, it's not like your local society in, you know, in Myrtle Beach where everybody lives within 20 miles of each other. <laughs> we had part, you know, we had attendees from Australia. Yeah. And, Israel, we had uh, people in Europe, we had North, all across North America. So we had people from literally, I mean, a, across the globe that would come in. We had Australians that would come for the early morning sessions, but it was midnight where they lived. <laughs> yeah. And they would watch until one in the morning, then they would go to bed and then they'd wake up and then they'd catch the last session. Um, <laughs> when, they, when they'd wake up in the they'd wake up early and then they'd catch the last session. And, you know, and we, same thing with, with our European attendees. Right. They would, you know, often they would stay up until, you know, sort of the, the middle of the day. And then they're like, well, it's dinner time. And so I'm going to leave and then do that. And same thing with uh, like, like Mary out on the West coast, <laughs> keeping the Pacific it was early Ocean for from her. taking over, yeah. you know, getting up at 6 a.m. Yeah. I, I didn't, didn't do that. I, I, I managed to hit the second session every day and yeah. i thought i could catch the first ones on the recording except sunday i slept in a, a little yeah. wow. that, well, and, an, that, but... and another advantage for us using zoom was that it allows us to use a single link mm -hmm. and then parse out the the videos and so every time you hit record yeah. stop the record it creates a separate video capture mm -hmm. uh, which makes the upload and processing end of it that much easier i've already got all of the videos uploaded to youtube and it's just a matter of now putting those in one by one, um, so only only eighteen to do. Um, you know, <laughs> probably tomorrow morning, and then they'll all be up two days right. after the conference. Instead of we have to take a, an eight hour long video from mm -hmm. GoToWebinar, mm -hmm. break it into eight little pieces, make sure that you know everything's just right, and then go in and upload it. This was just right. Literally, Linda would send me a link every night. Well every morning the next day because the after party was going so <laughs> um, and uh, she would send me a link the next morning and uh, then i would just simply download those six videos and then to my computer and then i'd upload them to youtube and uh yeah and so it just made that part of it that much easier uh, so for, that's that's uh, a bonus what went on at the oh, after parties what's that what went on at the after party? i missed them because i just got <laughs> Don was sitting still. I had to move around and yeah, I I have kids and so I didn't go to the after parties either. But they I some did. of them literally went. Well, Mary so, said she Mary did. Mary said she went. Yeah, so well, I went. Give us a scoop. Yeah. <laughs> oh, and, and there were these side conversations and people were just talking about different things. So um and there was some screen sharing at oh. one of them. Um Linda was giving a presentation on Sunday maybe Saturday, whatever day it was. So the night before she said, do you guys maybe want to hear, I need another oh, rehearsal. Practice, do you want to hear yeah. it? So we got a, like a bonus session. Oh, cool. <laughs> that was pretty cool. And um, uh, the guy who helped me, uh, Miles on my little mm -hmm. issue, I'm sitting here messaging him. It's like, okay, could you help me with this thing? I'm trying to you know, <laughs> see what you think about the letters in this thing. And, um, and so we kind of, you know, just messaged back and forth so you could have a little private conversations or listen to the whole thing. Um, it was lots of different stuff going on. It was good. Uh, so I, I have a question for those who have been to the big conferences mm -hmm. and who went to VGA. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, what do you think? I mean, you know, obviously you're not going to stop going to the big conferences. Oh, no. <laughs> whenever <laughs> we're going to have them I again. I need to hug people. <laughs> <laughs> Other than the hugging, you know, how does it, how, how would you, you know, I mean, you got to sleep in your own bed every night. This is true. Yeah. This is true. There's one just, the, go ahead, Laura. One of the differences for me, too, was that I wasn't presenting because it seems like sometimes between being an ambassador and being a speaker at these conferences, 
you're just picking and choosing what you can mm -hmm. do. Like, mm -hmm. you know, you can't talk to this person or whatever. This, there's always these deadlines. So there was something really relaxing about, yeah, I stuck in my pajamas and <laughs> I wore a regular shirt, but you know, <laughs> it, it was, it was just a slower pace. But on the other hand, the in-person one, there's, the, there is an excitement about it. There mm -hmm. is the, and I love traveling though. Right. To me, that's not an inconvenience. That's just, that's just fun. Yeah. And, and then there's that roommate element too, right? Oh, I know. <laughs> Laura, Laura and I have been roommates several times, so. <laughs> well, I mean, and Does your husband watch this, Sherry? Like, you do have a roommate, right? I mean, <laughs> yeah, how's he going to feel about this? He didn't care. He didn't care. <laughs> you know, I mean, I miss the chance of getting to go out to dinner with people. Right. Um, that's always yes. kind of fun. Um, yeah. You know, when we did have the breakout rooms and the after party, so you sort of had that, but um, that, that didn't feel like it feels at a conference. Exactly. Um, yeah. And, yeah. It's, it's, a, it's a different kind of good, not like a replacement right. good. It's like, right. yeah. And a compliment kind of, right. um, I, you know, for me, um, I mean, it's nice that I can spend the conference fee and, and have that be my only cost. I mean, it's mm -hmm. a much more, um, affordable option because, you know, even with some speaker fees, I still wind up every conference in the hole. Um, and, <laughs> and so, it, you know, and, there, and there's benefits. I mean, I get to see people. I get, you know, yeah. go to conferences. Yeah. But, but this was, was um, you know, really good. Um, I'm just I grateful that, that we have this venue yes. during the times that we're living. Yes. That, you know, think if we didn't even have this. Yeah. You know, I just, it would be. I think yeah. we would all be sitting in a corner. Exactly. <laughs> and we did, we <laughs> did get to like, do, we did get 19... to do, oh, go ahead, Laura. Laura, it's okay. Go ahead. I was going to say, she's right. Like in 1918, I mean, <laughs> when you were stuck yeah. at home, you were, you you were really home, stuck. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Hope you liked your brother because that's who you saw. <laughs> <laughs> that's too funny. Well, there was a, another state conference that, opened this weekend and the recordings yeah. are available um and i spoke at that yeah um i recorded my sessions a few weeks before and you know i will listen to the other sessions but it just didn't have the same kind of engagement yeah uh -huh. that the vga conference had i mean right, I didn't, you know, people were live listening to you with anybody yeah wow. Yeah. Um, so there's, there's, exactly. you know, I can hear talks, but that's just like listening to, you know, a series of webinars as opposed to right. really being able to attend a conference. And this felt much more like attending a conference. Well, exactly. and I give a lot of credit to that, to Dan mm -hmm. and to Linda and then Jeanette yeah. on Sunday, because, yes. you know, they, they really, um, I don't know, they just, the, the atmosphere that they brought to it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Exactly. Well, I was going to say that we got to do something because we had, you know, pull because of Dan, we got to do something during the conference that we would have done. Yes. Say we'd been at another conference together, right? We got to go into our own breakout room <laughs> and Shelly Murphy was with us too, but she couldn't be yep. with us tonight. So we miss Shelly's um, comments for tonight, but she, she had something else that she had to do tonight. So um, anyway, so we all got to get together just like we would have done. We would have had a Gen Friends meetup somewhere and take a photo. And so we did. We, we met up in our own little breakout room and got a photo. So that was really fun. So there's things that, you know, you, you can do to kind of recreate some things that you would have done live in person. So, and, and I agree, this, this one really felt fun and engaging. Mm -hmm. And I think... I think, Dan, it's really a pattern as the other conferences are going to, you know, whatever they're going to do for next year, a lot of them have already announced that they're going to, you know, they're going to be virtual next year. I think they should take a little look at, I think so too, <laughs> at yeah. these breakout rooms now and, and all those kind of things. Um, I know that over the summer, some of the institutes and things that I went to, they did that, but they didn't do them as often. And I think that was the key too. You didn't just do one breakout room because you know sometimes you can get into a breakout room and there's like two or three people and and nobody's really talking and mm -hmm. it's you know but when you know you're going to have a chance after everybody speaks <laughs> to go again you know to be 
into another um, breakout room, it's really fun because it's just like, yeah. you know, Russian roulette of who you're going <laughs> to be in a room in. Who's well, it going to be this time? I, I would go into a room and I would be excited when I'd see somebody that I'd already had met in a yeah. previous yeah. breakout room and be like, oh, hey, they're here. You know, like yeah. I'd, I'd be genuinely, mm -hmm. exactly. even, even if I hadn't met them until just the breakout right. session before. Right. You know? yeah. And then, uh, I mean, I've gotten quite a few friend requests uh, yes, me from, too. from me too. people me too. That, I, yeah. that I was in breakout rooms with. And for, Wait, for me, I as... as <laughs> <laughs> what? Oh, Lord. Well, and, and for me, as VGA president, it was it was great to yes. be able to to get out and actually see physically often our, the members and ask them questions about what would they like to see for next yes. year and, and start a conversation around that and, and really kind of do informal polling amongst the members to see what right. we what we like and everyone said that they really loved those the breakout sessions mm -hmm. and that um that was really sort of the the big highlight i think for for everyone was, the, right. was those breakout sessions so and that interaction because we've we've missed that i mean yes. that's the uh, you know the other things the going out for dinner mm -hmm. for me being able to watch reruns of american pickers on cable because we don't have cable <laughs> can't afford that go hunt down um, some dole whip yeah find find a place that offers dole whip somewhere in the city um that was missing right um, yes and, and, uh, and being able to go to an archive or family history library yes. so right. those are things that you you can't you know do virtually but right you and know like for, for me seeing you sharing in per person our elizabeth o'neill who's one of my closest genealogy buddies mm -hmm. i have i literally only see elizabeth when we are somewhere away exactly neither one of us have ever been to the other one's home state so. right right <laughs> yeah yeah so because, you know go ahead I mean, Dan. We do, yeah i was gonna say because and that's a great point i mean we do make these sort of genealogy friends mm -hmm. you know that that we get at these conferences i know last year michael strauss and i spoke together i think it was eight times um wow. over, over eight eight months um yeah. and i mean one of those was at grip where we literally our our dorm rooms were right next to each other mm. um and so for a week we lived next door to each other but <laughs> i've never been to his house he's never been to my house and but we're still friends and, and there's yeah. still that opportunity to 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 interact with your friends at at a conference like what we did exactly. uh, versus where it's just a bunch of pre-recorded sessions right. or okay well the next webinar is is going to begin in 30 minutes and we will have 30 minutes of silence <laughs> until the next webinar you know and everyone you just know, be and I think, quiet go ahead laura i think there's something inherently more engaging about a live stream versus a pre-recorded mm -hmm. even even in its imperfection like for fgs they you know i found a typo in one of my slides and the guy fixed it for me um <laughs> so it was perfect there wasn't a typo but there's something more engaging about it being live even if there's an, a couple more ums or ahs or oh right. the screen sharing didn't work the first time or what have you which i don't know how to put my how to articulate why that is yeah I think it's you're you're um, feeding off the audience. I think that's what it is. You're feeding off the audience. So whether you're the presenter or you are watching, I think it's just it's just more engaging, you know. And it's you can yes, you can put your questions in the little chat box, but it's it, there's it's it's different when you know you raise your hand or, and you ask that question, you know, in person live. Go ahead, Mary. Well, I actually think. Um, some of the conversations that were going on in the chats during the talks oh, were something yes. that you don't even get that at a live conference. Well, that's true because you don't want to talk in the middle of somebody's presentation, right? right? But, but if you don't <laughs> understand something and you put it out there, yeah, there's all sorts of people. And I had, a, you know, engaging with some people like, well, yeah. you should look here or whatever. Yeah, exactly. Um, so that's a, was a, a benefit. That's You'll a never get plus. it alive. Yeah. Yes. No, you're, plus. You're a hundred percent right. I did a conference with youth this last summer, and that was one of the first times I found something superior about a Zoom than in person. Because usually the youth are sitting there listening to something, you have no idea what's going through their heads. <laughs> but they were listening and they were responding, and you know, 
yeah. engaging and you could see that and it helped you engage. Mm -hmm. So I think you're right. That ability to see comments and responses live. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. And talk I mean, you amongst might, yourself while you might whisper to the person sitting next to you, but yeah, that's about but it. That's, yeah. So this yeah. was pretty cool. It was so. great. It was so, so congratulations, Stan. That was just wonderful. Well, it, was, it, it wasn't, it wasn't just me. There was a whole team of people that, that made that happen that were both in front of the camera and people that were doing things behind the scenes that made that so that we could pull something like that off for, for three days with yeah. me being gone for a day exactly. for my daughter's yeah. birthday. You yeah. Know, so. yeah, yeah, absolutely. No. Uh, and that um, was another benefit for me because I couldn't have brought my seven-year-old daughter to a conference. And exactly. I, I, I would have missed her birthday if this was in person in some right. place else. Mm. Um, exactly. And I needed to be there. And, and we and, all wouldn't have been able to tell her happy birthday. That's right. right. And, <laughs> and, I, and I have missed kids' birthdays. Um, yes. Well, where, where, was, where was it? I think it was in... Uh, at F yeah, it was at FGS when it was in DC a couple mm -hmm. years ago. Mm -hmm. Um, it was over my, my oldest son's birthday. And so what, what does any kid turning 15 want, but a video of, you know, 30 strangers singing him happy birthday. So that's what we did at the beginning of, of one of my talks. So <laughs> what, who, what seven-year-old doesn't want, you know, a hundred plus complete strangers all wishing them happy birthday right I mean, exactly that was, exactly that was, you know so i was able to you know bring the kids in and and during right. sessions i'm on mute and so i could have the door open to the That's office right. and yeah the kids could come in and ask questions because they were in school on friday and and yeah. had questions for dad sometimes exactly um, and so that was that was a big benefit <laughs> for me was being able to be home mm -hmm. to be to be home and as sure. soon as they, soon as the conference is over it's not oh i'm going up to my hotel room what am i going to do for mm, dinner right you know, where's, where's the closest dole whip which they need an app so dole make an app okay exactly. um, yeah. and uh, i i will literally like if it's a paid app i will buy it <laughs> lots of people will buy it okay um and, and then figure out like oh it's not it's not you know the night that they have constant reruns of american pickers what am i going to do tonight <laughs> let's see what's on netflix um you know there there wasn't any of that it was like yeah. oh I walked out i was immediately surrounded by you know my kids and we could have mm -hmm. dinner together and still have conversations exactly and it was yeah. it was the literally for me the best of both worlds i got to hang out with my with my genealogy nerd buddies for <laughs> eight hours and then go hang out with yeah. my you know my kid buddies exactly exactly well we were hoping that you know the purpose was to encourage people to to look into what is available out there and don't be afraid to use the technology you know if, if you've never used it before there's so many ways that you can you know ask different people ask your genealogy friends you know have you gone to a conference like this i don't know how to use i don't have zoom or i don't have whatever it might be how do i figure out how to use it you know they're going to put me in a breakout room what does that mean do i need to be nervous no and, and it's your choice anyway so you just click on accept that i want to move into this next room if you want to and then you automatically go back when it's done <laughs> even when you walk out the room and you go uh oh <laughs> where am i going to be if they put everybody back in the main room you just automatically go back so there's so many wonderful options out there to build your genealogy skills during this crazy time that we're living in. So we just wanted to encourage you by sharing with you our, um, our uh, last weekend, what, what we did, our experiences and the things we learned. We learned a lot from the presenters. Mary and, and uh, Melissa, you guys were fabulous. You did a great job with your, with your classes. So we, we appreciate that. And uh, Dan, we appreciate everything you did. So really check into what is going on virtually and check and see if your genealogy society is doing some virtual things. And if not, maybe you can use some of the ideas and the things that we have talked about to help uh, encourage your members to get on and, and continue with the programming that, that you were having before. So does anybody have any last minute things they want to say about virtual conferences or virtual education? Nope. All right. Just get out there and sign up. Is, did yes. anybody say, okay, get up, get out there and sign up and go learn and, and uh, don't let COVID hold you back from continuing on your genealogy journey. So with that, we'll say bye and we'll see you next time on Gen Friends. Bye everybody. Bye.
Bye.